Tudor Dixon wins. Within the hour, the Republican gubernatorial candidate claimed victory in Grand Rapids after becoming the projected winner in the race to take on Democratic incumbent Governor Gretchen Whitmer in November. It was a headline-stealing, tumultuous gubernatorial race over the last few months, and tonight, it appears to be over. The Associated Press has called the race for businesswoman and conservative commentator Tudor Dixon. Yeah, she's got 40% of the vote at this juncture, which is almost as much as her two nearest competitors. Tudor Dixon, a businesswoman, mother of four, was backed by former President Trump and the wealthy DeVos family. She snagged again that most coveted endorsement from the former president. And tonight, she is the unofficial winner, only an hour after the polls closed in Michigan State Republican Party, posted a tweet congratulating Tudor Dixon. We have live team coverage tonight. We begin with our Rachel Louise Just, live in Grand Rapids with the Dixon campaign. And the Michigan Republican Party has its first ever female nominee for governor in Tudor Dixon tonight. In November, we'll see the first thing also, two women facing off for the governorship between Tudor Dixon and Governor Gretchen Whitmer. Tonight, the vibe of this party, if I could call it that, always very victorious from the very beginning. And as we saw these results to start to roll in, we did not even see a phase in the crowd. I didn't see celebrations or cheering. It seemed like it was celebratory from the very beginning. I want to take a step back, though, as it's been a long, long road to get to where we're at right now. We had around a dozen people who were going to run for the governor. We had 10 people sign in and, and turn in those ballots. And then we had five of them kicked off the ballot. That then threw this race right back to the very start. And we had to see some of these candidates competing for it with, excuse me, with Tudor Dixon in those four candidates of the five who were really neck and neck for quite a while. Finally, we saw Tudor Dixon take the lead and then tonight it was a very easy victory with, with some people even calling it just a couple of minutes after polls closed tonight. Tonight, Tudor Dixon recognizing that long road and saying that there would be a long road ahead as well with a fierce fight for Governor Whitmer. Here's what she said specifically about that. So now it's time, my fellow citizens, I want to make this a better state. And if we want a better state, we need a better governor. And tonight, I ask you to continue that discussion with me. I'll be interviewing for the job in the state in the days and the weeks ahead. We don't need any more half-hearted promises from lifelong politicians. We need someone focused on our moms, on our dads, on our children, and on our future. Football coach blows the whistle on his own criminal background and loses his position on the team. Tonight, that decision has divided a West Michigan community as News Channel 3's Mike Kravesick joins us from Kenyon Park to Plainwell, in Plainwell rather, to explain why the coach's record became a major issue. Mike. Yeah, Eric and Eddie and several parents here tell me they feel this coach's past should in no way disqualify him for coaching here. Right now, a youth summer camp is happening for football players age 5 through 12. One of the coaches that ran the camps the last few years is not here right now. He was fired after disclosing his criminal record, which the director of the football league says they didn't know about up until recently because coaches did not have to pass background checks until... Now 42 years old, Shane Sears says he's left behind a life of yeah. crime. When you see this guy, do you feel like that's a different person? I don't even know who that guy is. I don't want to know who that guy is. I got rid of that guy a long time ago. A record including six felony charges related to drug and property crimes. His last, a 2018 meth possession conviction. That year, Sears says he got clean and started coaching youth football. I started a whole new life. Um, I started coaching. I was allowed to coach, and uh, that that helped my sobriety. Sears was preparing to coach fifth and sixth grade playing well players, including his twin 10 year olds this summer. This spring, Sears says he wanted to coach his kids Little League baseball team, but didn't pass a criminal background check. Sears says he told the director of the Rocket Youth Football League about that. The director told us, all three of us, that I was good to coach um, after we had already discussed my record. Uh, Days later, Sears says Seth Rainey, the head of the Plainwell Rocket Football Board of Directors, decided he couldn't coach after getting feedback from the coaching staff, player parents, and community members. My, uh, my entire criminal history is because I spent most of my life addicted to drugs. 
it tore me apart. It drug me down. I Randy wouldn't speak to us on camera, but in a statement posted on behalf of the league, says it would implement background checks for all volunteers during current and future seasons. Rainey didn't specify what type of criminal charges disqualified the now former coach or what could prevent other parents from coaching in the future. Yeah, the Plain, the Plainwell Rocket football team is one of 14 teams in the Kalamazoo Valley Rocket League. Chuck Hadley, the director of the league's board, says it's not involved with background checks, instead leaving it up to each of the community organizations. Hadley says the league does plan to discuss possible changes in the future.